Shalom. I want to give all the praise and all the glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwidash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. So I'm going to be uh, in Mark, the third chapter today. Um, go ahead and start at one. It says, it's talking about Yahweh Shai. It says, and he entered, <clears throat> and he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. You remember, you got you just like. The men who are teaching this truth right now, we have a lot of haters. There are a lot of people that come up against us. Of course, that was the same for Yahweh Shai. He had a lot of haters, a lot of people coming up against him, right? And why is that? Because just like Yahweh Shai, we're teaching against the grain, right? We're teaching against, um, you know, the, the philosophies and the doctrines and the lies they've been taught. See? So... This is uh, verse 2. <clears throat> and they watch. Okay, I already read that. So they want to accuse him, right? Let's read verse 3. And he saith unto the man which had, had the withered hand, stand forth. And he saith unto them, it is, lot, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace, right? Because they couldn't answer that, right? Because, you know, as, as it is written, Yahweh Shai is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Lord is, the Sabbath was made for men, not the other way around. The scriptures tells you that. All right, let's, let's get that real quick. So, yeah, we want to keep the Sabbath to the best of our ability. But the thing is, is there's going to be times... Like let's say let's say you need gas and, and you're heading you need to go to work. We're in captivity. Does that mean you are you gonna be able to call in and say, Oh, you can't make it to work because you have no gas and it's the Sabbath? Well you know, we're in captivity, we can't keep the laws. We keep them to the best of our ability. If there's days when you can't you don't need to work and it's the Sabbath and it's in your control, then by all means, you know, don't work on that day. We let's bring this verse out real quick. This is Mark 2 and 27. It says, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of also, is Lord also of the Sabbath. All right, because you have to remember. <clears throat> That's what it is, you know. The Sabbath was made for the man, not the other way around. All right? <clears throat> but does that mean we just um, break the Sabbath all the time? No, you, you keep the Sabbath to the best of your ability. Let's keep reading in verse in chapter 3. Verse 5, And when he, had, when he had looked around about on them with anger... Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and he had, and his hand was restored whole on the others on the other, as the other. So Yahweh Shai healed this man's hand on the Sabbath, okay? And he was pissed off about it. You you just said with anger. He looked on them with anger. You know? Because you know a lot of times. Uh, the Sabbath will fall on a day where we do camp, or I should say camp will fall on the Sabbath. Does that mean we, we don't do the work? No, we, you know, the, the Sabbath is a, is a, is a good day to do, to do the, uh, the work. We go out and we, we've preached, we've held camp on the Sabbath and, you know, we're always like, Hey, it's, it's the Sabbath day. Where would we rather be? What, what, um, what would we rather be doing on the Sabbath but be at camp, you see? Verse 6, 
And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. But Yahawashai withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan, that they might or that they about Tyre and Sidon a great multitude. When they had heard what great things he did, he came unto them, unto him. So these people were gathering in masses and multitudes to try to, you know, they wanted to, uh, they wanted to see Yahweh Shai. All right. Verse. Nine, <clears throat> and he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. So throng is it's like a packed crowd, like a bunch of people. You know, like if you're in a building and there's a tons of people and it's over capacity, that would be like a throng, right? So Yahweh Shai was like, hey, prepare a boat so that I can go on the boat, and you know I don't want to be in the middle of all these, in the midst of all these people. You see. So verse 10, for he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many ha as had plagues. So actually, this is actually a, 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 an example of a, a great amount of people who had who had great faith. Because for you to, you know, be in that position where you want to see Yahweh Shai and you just want to touch him, right? That's an example of faith, right? You, you you believe he's the son of Yahweh. You believe he can heal you, see? Verse 11. Because remember, whenever there was a, a place where the, there was no faith, Yahweh Shai said he couldn't heal anybody. Watch. And... Well, let me get that. It's in Mark 6 and 5. It says, well, I'll start at, let me see. He, I'll start at. I'll start at four. It says Mark six and four. But Yahweh Shai said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Because a lot of people in, in um in our own country, obviously this is Babylon the Great, they don't believe that we're the prophets, just like Yahweh Shai. They didn't believe he was the son of man. And among his own kin, meaning his own his own people. A lot of our own people, they don't believe we're the prophets, right? That's be, that's why they come up against us, just like they did Yahweh Shai, and is in and his own house, right? This is our own family, our own our own family members. A lot of maybe it's even your woman. She, she may talk shit. You ain't no prophet. You ain't a prophet. You see. So this is what the scripture speaks on, right? This is a uh, for, you know, it says everything is written aforetime for our learning. So this is to encourage the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, who are prophets and friends of Yahweh, right? Just because the people in your house, you know, don't believe who you are who you are, they don't believe you're a prophet. It doesn't don't don't let it discourage you or bring you down, right? If you're of the elect, if you're of the prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know it's already ordained. You see, but this is encouraging because it reminds you, hey, you know. It's written that these people wouldn't believe that we're the prophets. All right. So verse five, and he could do there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching, you see. So wherever there's no faith, wherever there's no um, belief, you know, the you can't do miracles in that spot, right? If they don't believe, then you're not going to be able to do a miracle. You're not to you're heal. You can't heal people when they don't believe. You see. 
Um, let me get Matthew 13 and 58 to back it up. Matthew 13, 58. It says, and it starts out with the same thing we just read in Mark. It says in 57, and they were offended in him, but Yahweh said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. All right. So to be healed, there has to be faith has to be present. You see, you have to have you have to believe to be healed. If you if you, if you have if someone comes to you and, and they're like, hey, I want to I want to I need help. Well, if they don't believe, you know, they say, you pray for me. And you, you, they don't believe in your prayer or they don't have the faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Then there's not going to be no miracle or no healing done. You know, this the healing, the the uh, the belief, the you know coming into this truth, into this knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh It takes you know faith. Faith is required. <clears throat> Let me get back to Mark three. And six says, and the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that. I'm actually at 10. It says, for he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him to touch him as many as he had as had plagues. So that was them displaying their faith. Verse 11, and unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the son of Yahweh. See, and, you know, just to, you know, not to pat our own backs, you know, the prophets, but we've had unclean spirits bow down to us at the camps, you know, which, you know, literally demons, people with demons on them. You know, people, a lot of these times were, um, when they come up and bow to us to the, at the camp, were, were um, like homeless people who were downtown. You know, we're, out, we're down there. You'll just have, and usually they got demons on them, right? Because they're on drugs or they're just in a bad state of mind. But what do they do? That they, we have, We've had it. Brothers can testify where we've had these people come walk up to the camp who look homeless and, and they just bow down and walk away. They don't say nothing. And, you know, it's because these unclean spirits, they actually know who the, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai are because those, like the, the demons, they know who we are, right? Let's get that account. I think it's in Acts 19, right? Because these demons, and really the word demon, it means genius when you look into that word. But demons, or I'm sorry, Acts 19 and 15, it says, And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahweh Shai, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are ye? You see? So this demon... This evil spirit, he knew Yahweh Shai, he knew Paul, right? Because like I said, the demons, the evil spirits, they know who we are. I had a demon lady, and there's a, on my page, there's a video where this, this demon, she actually, and I had never met her in my life, but she, she, she called me by the name of my, uh, my real, my biological father. You know, she said, she said, hey, you are Officer Robert N. Senius, right? And that that literally blew my mind because how in the hell is this random demon lady on, on the street corner going to know the name of my father without, without uh, divination being involved, right? Because why? It's, this is why the evil spirits know who we are, see? And there's a video... And I'm telling you, the person who was the most shocked by that 
by this testimony was my uh, own mother, right? Because I showed her the video and she couldn't believe. She was like, how that lady know your dad's name? She just couldn't believe her mouth dropped, you see? So let me go back to Mark, because these demons know who we are. Maybe the people in your house stumble at you and who you are, but the demons know who you are, man, these evil spirits. Mark 3 and 12 says, And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he, and he goeth up, and see, this is the opposite of Bishop Nathaniel, because Nathaniel, he wants to be praised, he wants to be glorified as if he was Yahawashai. But Yahawashai himself was, hey, he didn't want people to know who he was, you know? Verse 13, And he goeth up into a mountain, and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that, they, that he might send them forth to preach. It's like when we anoint ourselves, you know, here right now as prophets, we, we, sometimes after camp, we'll go into the parking garage where we work or where we do the work. And, um, you know, brothers will anoint each other. And that's what Yahweh Shai is doing here. He's saying he's taking them up in a mountain and, and then he's he ordains 12, which were his disciples, right? He anoints them, meaning the word anointing means chosen, meaning he chooses them to go out and teach, all right? Verse uh, 15, and to have, well, let's read 14, sorry. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. See, brothers, when we come into this truth and we come into the fold of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we have power to heal, heal uh, sicknesses and to cast out devils, right? And really, it, it could be a spiritual level, and, and it's going to be a physical level when we get the, the spiritual power is, is increased, right? T Jeremiah 1, and is it 3, or is Isaiah? Maybe it's Isaiah. Yeah, it's not Jeremiah, it's Isaiah. Let me see. Oh, 5. Isaiah 1 and 5, it says, Why should you be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. This is talking about the nation of Israel. Isaiah is talking about the nation of Israel. So he's telling you the whole head is sick, meaning our people are sick because they don't understand the truth. All right? But when you teach people the truth and they receive it, you're actually healing them from being sick. So it's spiritual and then, and then eventually, for us, just like Yahweh Shai, it's going to be on a physical level. We're going to be able to perform miracles physically on people, you see? But again, it takes that faith. You need that faith and your works to, uh, they go hand in hand for that motor to run, right? For that thing to be fulfilled, we're going to have to have both faith and works. And, you know, when people start witnessing us healing other people who are, you know, sick or have uh, physical ailments and they start to see us heal people that, that it's going to it's going to bring in more people to, to the to the remnant right it's going to it's going to build their faith when they witness those type of things so we go back to mark 3 and i'm at 15 it says and have the power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon, he surnamed Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon, the Canaanite. And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into a house. All right, so those those were the twelve that he ordained. Those were the twelve that he or that he anointed as, you know, the people, the men to teach, and preach. Verse twenty, and the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. 
And when his friends heard of it, they went out to, to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes came, which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Right? So Yahweh Shai is anointing the, uh, the, the disciples, and really they're becoming, a, they're, they're, they're transforming from disciples to apostles, right? Because I've told you in the past, we've taught you that the disciple is the student of discipline. And then when, you, when, you're, when you're finished being a student and you start to teach this truth, now you're becoming an apostle, all right? The apostle, the word apostle, it means to be sent away, sent out. Sent out to do what? Sent out to teach. That's what's happening right here. Then you're going to have the haters come up against you, right? These scribes were hating on Yahweh Shai and the disciples, and at that point they were apostles, right? Because they were getting ready to go out and teach. Yahweh Shai had anointed them. So <clears throat> let me read this, verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So when you look into Beelzebub, that means that's a, that's a demon. That's a, a devil-like demon, okay? So these scribes were, um, you know, they were, that's what they were calling Yahweh Shai, all right? And let me just read it on Wikipedia. It said, Beelzebub is a name derived from a Philistine god, which those are Hamites, Canaanites, right? Like if you remember, um, Goliath was a Philistine, right? Which those were enemies of Israel. This is formerly worshipped in Ekron and later adopted by some Abraham, Abrahamic religion as a major demon. The name Beelzebub is associated with the Canaanite god Baal, right? So which Baal we know is, uh, is the, basically Satan, right? It's a false god. So that's what they were calling Yahweh Shai. And that's the same thing they do to us when we're out on the streets teaching because they get offended and they're not... They don't know the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So in, instead of receiving us as prophets, they, they call us devils and they say, Oh, you guys are the you guys are, are wicked. You guys have devils on you. You see? This shows you we're in good company, man, because they did the same thing to Yahweh Shai. You see? If they're not matter of fact, if the if the people, you know, the, the majority of the people are not calling you a devil then yeah, that's a sign that that's a false prophet. If they're praising you and worshiping you, that's a sign you're a false prophet, man. Let's get that real quick. Yeah, let's get it in Luke. Yeah, when you when people are speaking good about you, like for instance T D Jakes, Joel Olstein, Joyce Meyer, Creflo Dollar, you know, that's when you need to worry. You're hey, a job of the prophet, you like it or not. And it started out with the, the first prophet, or I should say the chief prophet, Yahweh Shai. Which, yeah, first prophet is it's also uh, is also correct, but um, <clears throat> Lou, you know, the true prophets are, are are you know, we're built up to go against the grain, go against countries, go against people, go against governments. See, but when they're speaking good uh, goodly of you, then you should be concerned. Because those are the false prophets, the ones they speak good of. Let's read it. Luke 6 and 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so you you speaking that this is a like whether you're able to receive this or understand this or not. When people are speaking goodly of you and, and they tell you, oh, this is a man of God right here. Then you should be concerned, man, because... Let's read it again. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. You see? So they're not speaking good of us right now. They're not speaking well of us right now. 
They're, they talk shit about the, the Hebrew Israelites. You know, even even the other the other Hebrew Israelite camps talk shits about GMS, you know? Why? Because hey, we are the true prophets. Lord's will, I'm in that number, you know? But we're the true prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and that's why people come against us. It's the way Yahweh set it up, man. If you don't have a spirit to receive it or understand this, it's because Yahweh Shai has not given you, he's not opened your eyes to this, to this truth, all right? So you're, it's, and woe means destruction. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Hey, that means destruction to you. So you got the majority of these people, they're, they're not speaking bad about these televangelists that you see on TV. I even had a Jake the other day tell me, he's like, oh man. And he, this is what he said. He goes, you know what, man, like, Ever since you shared a little bit of this truth to me, and this brother's a Gadite, I believe through the spirit he's a Gadite. But he said, man, you've actually intrigued me, he told me, you know. He said, you know, you, and he said, you and the only other one to do that ever is Joel Osteen. He's all, I don't know, some about the way that guy speaks, man. And I just told him, I said, man, <laughs> be careful with that one. And I left it at that, you see. But it shows you that our people are so confused and they really have no understanding. So, <clears throat> but he said in the same breath, he said, "You intrigue me." And he's on the only other pro the only other teacher or preacher that I liked listening to was Joel Olstein. And like I say, this brother was a Gadite. So you need to be careful with that, man. But anyway, let's get back to Mark three and where am I at? So the true prophets, you know, they're going to be hated. They're going to be, we're going to be called devils. We're going to be called demons. All these things that you can think of, you know, we're going to deal with all of this, uh, these people coming up against us. You see, that's a sign of a true prophet, you know, whether you're able to receive that or not. Mark 3 and verse, where am I at? <clears throat> 22 it says and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he hath Beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils and he called them unto him and said in them into parables how can Satan cast out Satan if you know if we're Satan how are we going to get rid of these demons these wicked demons that are on people right that's what Yahweh asked him. If I'm Satan, how am I going to cast out Satan? See? You're calling me a demon. How am I going to cast out a demon? You know? That don't make sense, right? Verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand, right? A.K.A. America. And everybody sees that America is divided right now. So guess what? This kingdom won't stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand, right? If you're a woman, she doesn't believe in this truth and she doesn't believe you're one of the prophets, hey, chances are that woman's going to leave you, right? Or people in your house, if they don't believe you, man, woe to them, the people in your household that don't believe you are who you are. They're going to have, they're going to be destroyed because of their unbelief. They're going to die in their unfaithfulness, right? As it is written. All right. <clears throat> Verse 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. Right. Verse 27. No matter. No, I'm sorry. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man and he will spoil his house. And then he will spoil his house, right? Verse 28. Verily, I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, right? So they can say whatever they want about us, but as long as we're not blaspheming the Holy Spirit, we're in good hands. We have protection. We have defense. 
Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is going to protect us, and He's going to charge His angels to protect us. You see, as it, as it is written. All right. So, you know, the only the only thing that is going to fuck you over if you're a prophet, whether you're a real prophet or a false prophet, and I should just say whether you're a false prophet, is when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. If you're teaching unsound doctrine or you're teaching something that is not written in the holy scriptures then then that's um that that's where you you know you're that's your uh demise because like he he just said yahweh i said but he that shall blaspheme against the holy spirit hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation all right and that says what it says that's self-explanatory because they said he hath an unclean spirit you see they're trying to say he has an unclean, but how could Yahweh Shai have an unclean spirit when he was just, all he was doing was teaching according to the spirit. And that's the same fashion we teach where we only teach according to the spirit. We always tell people, if it's not written, then we're not, you know, we're not down with something that's not written that people are teaching. See? Like people will say, oh, Jesus and God say, they say, come as ye are. There's no verse that says that. So therefore, we're not going to teach that. All right? People think that's an actual verse, come as ye are. No, that's not in the Bible. But again, you can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You can't go against the word. All right? You can't teach something that's not in the scripture. And this is what is going to, you know, this is a, 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 a divider, right? The spirit, the, the, the words in the book are a divider because you're going to have people who believe all kind of bullshit. Then you're going to have the righteous who are going to believe only what is written and according to the way it's written. Those are your true prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Anybody outside of that is a false prophet, all right? They're speaking good about you. You're a false prophet. When they're talking shit, come up against you, hey, that's a sign that you might be one of the one of the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Just like they spoke against Yahweh Hashem, they're speaking against us, all right? And our, starting out with our elders, right? Our elders have, have went through a lot. They've had a lot of people talk shit about them. But do they do? Does that mean they change up the 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 Holy Spirit? No, they've been they've been in line with the Holy Spirit, and they're they're men. They're set as pillars or good examples for the men who are you know in this ministry, in this true ministry. See, the phone had a chime on that. Let's see. <clears throat> um, dang, I forgot what I was going to look up. Okay, forget it. I'm at verse 31. It says, And there came his brethren and his mother standing without him, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren seek with uh, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. So, you know, they're like, Hey, your your mom and your brother's looking for you. And they, they're not even with you right over here. Because remember, they're calling him a devil. So they're still trying to talk shit. Not even your family's with you, you know. And what Yahweh should I tell him? Verse 33. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of the Most High, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Right? So Yahweh Shai says, you want to see the true family? As he says, where are my mothers? Where is my mother and my brethren? And he he basically opened his arms out <clears throat> to the to the people that were with him. And he says, Behold, these are my this is my true family. Like basically what he's saying. The ones who do the will of the Most High, the ones who do the will of my Father. And brothers in this truth, we can attest to that, man. Because we always tell you how we get vexed in the world because of all the wickedness and the abominations. When you come into this truth, you know, that's what it is. The the, the rest of the world becomes a vexation of spirit, right? And a lot of times, because you got to understand, 
your family members and sometimes it's well, not, a lot of times it's your immediate family members where they're not in the truth, you know, like we are. So even your family members can can uh, become a vexation of spirit, you see. But you know, if if it's the if it's the Lord's will, they'll um they'll repent. And me personally, I, I've uh, I've experienced this. You know, I'm not saying my family members have repented, but they um they definitely, you know, they I I, I would say they they've grown from when I first started teaching, right? And maybe they'll 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 repent a hundred percent. Maybe they won't, you know. That's all the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But you know, until that happens, you know, your true family is the brotherhood, is the ministry, you see. And brothers, I mean, who are in this truth, they understand what I'm saying. Because they know that they can be around the brotherhood and hey, you don't get vexed. You know, it's actually <laughs> it's actually the part of the week when we're hanging out with the brethren. Where it's actually you're at peace, you know, you, you your your conversations are godly. You're talking about the kingdom. You're talking about the destruction and the judgment of the of the heathen. You know, you, it's just a uh, a definite, um, like it says here in, in the scripture. You know, this is my true family. You know, who is my mother? Who is my brother? The ones who do the will of Yahweh, the ones who do the will of the Most High. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out on that. I want to give all the praise and all the glory unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rekakodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to the elect. May you brothers endure to the end. Shalom. <laughs>